Ooh, I should make margaritas. Yes, you ah, should. That's that's a fail on my part. Major. Fail. <laughs> I mean, it is like nine in the morning, and. <laughs> to our stupid reactions to get it. I'm Corbin. He makes a mean margarita, by the way. Oh, I make a perfect margarita. It really does. That's actually what it's called. It's called the perfect margarita. I'm amazing. Uh, <laughs> please follow us on Instagram, Instagram and Twitter for all juicy content. That's so juicy. juicy. And thank you for watching Patreon and follow us on the official Twitter account. Uh, and today we're doing a movie review. Da, da, da. Regardless of you guys thinking we're never doing a movie review again. Never we, again. We haven't done one in a week. Really? <laughs> we missed a week. Oh. <laughs> Tell me what other channels do um, as many reviews yeah. as we do. Yeah, come on, bring it. You can't. You can't. Anyways. In your face. <laughs> We're not going to stop movie reviews. No, we kind of like movies, if you couldn't yeah. tell. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> but we reviewed Margarita with a straw. Yep. Uh, and it's one we, uh, since we'd seen the trailer, we've been looking forward to it because we love Kalki. Yep. I think we've only seen Kalki, of course, in Gully Boy that and was in first. a little bit in right. uh, Sacre Gums. Right, and we've seen her in a couple of trailers. We're right. like, hey, Kalki. But yeah. from what we've seen of her, she's like one of those actresses that we, we, we kind of knew that we were going to love. Of right, course. exactly. But... This came out in 2014. Yeah, I remember when we saw the trailer for this, we were like, I want to watch this now. Yeah. Uh, but it was very difficult to find. Somebody sent us one. Thank, thank you, thank you. So you. Much. Um, but, uh, want to read the synopsis for us? I will. A rebellious young woman with cerebral palsy leaves her home in India to study in New York, unexpectedly falls in love, and embarks on an exhilarating journey of self-discovery. That's a pretty accurate... True. Synopsis. Yeah, I say to the director. And uh, the director is... Uh, forgive me if I mispronounce it. I believe it is... Shanali Bose, who also produced it and, and wrote, wrote it. it. Yeah, it looks like, so that's cool. Yep. Uh, and the casting director. <laughs> <laughs> no, hey, we love you, casting director. We do, we do. Uh, trust us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we love you very much. And the composer, because I found, we'll talk about it as well, the score was, was by, it looks like it's Mikey McCleary. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, the main stars of it are Kalki, right. of course, and I, 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 is it Colchin? I think it's Kalki Coakland. Coakland? I think so. Okay. I think her last name is pronounced Coakland. And uh, and then Ravathi, who played the mother. Correct. And then uh, she played the girlfriend. Sayani Gupta, right? And then I don't know the I, dad. There's not a there isn't a picture for the dad. I think that's um, his father. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right yeah. there is yeah, Kuljit Singh. Yeah. Who yeah. I believe I'm at least I'm totally wrong. Was a Punjabi? I believe so. Yeah, I mean, and that's the dad, and the, I think the, the dad I, is obviously that. I, I was thought I was proud of myself for like picking yeah. up that without them ever saying it. He does say it. Oh, at, he does. At a dinner scene, he's he's talking to the mom about the food and how he wants to have more of his kind of food, oh. being a Punjabi. I didn't even notice that. Yeah, he mentions it, yeah, he I, I, it. real quick. Oh, I was proud of myself. Yeah, good job. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yes, uh, Margarita with a straw. Uh, short little film, actually. I mean it. Not not short, I guess, but not long. Well, for Indian standards, it's short. Yeah. It, it, it's definitely the kind of runtime you would expect from a from this kind of genre of film in American cinema. This is the right runtime. Yes. Uh, this is what we would expect. Uh, and we you can go into it. I don't know how this was marketed in India. Right. Or how it did. Which, I'm assuming it was a little independent. Spoiler alert. Yeah, completely spoiler We alert. will talk about details of the film. So if you haven't seen Margaret Reader with a Straw... Go see it. Watch it and then come back and see the review. Yes. Unless you uh, like your movies being spoiled. Yes. <laughs> but well, what, what were your initial thoughts of the film? Uh, the first thing that comes to mind, because I have a lot of thoughts, like, imagine that. We have a lot of thoughts about a movie we saw. <laughs> um, it, it, surpri it surprised me in really good ways. Mm -hmm. Here's what surprised me. I initially wasn't really clear on what the story would be about. Yeah. I knew it would focus on her and we would get to watch and see what Kalki could do portraying this woman with cerebral palsy, which would be for any actor a Herculean undertaking. Yeah. Uh, we'll talk about that aspect of her work, I'm sure. But for me, the, the most unexpected thing that was for me maybe the most beautiful thing about the film, mm -hmm. there was a point in the film very quickly where I completely forgot yeah. that we're watching a woman with cerebral palsy story. Yeah, that we were just watching a woman's story. I, that's one of the things that uh, I, my wife watches. When she watches most of the stuff with me. Um, but uh, I was watching with her, and I said at the end, I said one of my favorite things about this, I think, was that 
this was just actually a coming of age story, 100%. and she just happened to have cerebral palsy. Same thing. It with, was hardly ever brought. Up. Same thing with the blind girl. Mm-hmm. It was. It was. It was. The cerebral palsy and the blindness were presented as it should be. I believe anybody with cerebral palsy or who's blind would, would be like, thank you for not making this the issue of the film. Yeah, everybody, this is the challenge I have in my life and everybody has a challenge. Yeah. We're not different than anybody else. And everybody she talked to, it wasn't what they brought up. They were At like, all. oh, what happened? Like, oh, oh how do you do? It's no. just they talked to her like a person, which was 100%. great. 100%. Uh, and so you don't normally see that. Normally, if there's a story about somebody with cerebral palsy or some type right. of injury or some type of disability, right. that is the thing. Which, which in a microcosm, kind of in a, 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 a picture of the message of the film was that moment when they won the band competition and that woman says, well, basically we gave it to you because it must have been so hard for you to write anything. It wasn't based on the quality of her work. Oh yeah. And she says, do you have anything to say? And she says, yeah, <laughs> I that's, laughed out loud. I was like, that was great. That was I love great. that. <laughs> and that's basically what the film, it's like for the films that focus on somebody with some kind of a challenge like this and that that's all you're talking about. It's like, Please don't make that the issue because mm-hmm. for them, that isn't, it's, it's the big challenge that they have, but this was far more, this was, this movie is not about a woman with cerebral no, palsy no. at all. This is a, it's a it's coming, coming of age it. story of a young woman trying to discover who she is and what she really wants, yeah. period. Yeah. And, and I she, love, that's my favorite thing about She just the movie. happens to have cerebral palsy and there's only a few instances where you see it affect her, like when they have to carry her up the stairs, which I yeah. thought was like actually a great scene. Great scene. Uh, that they just kind of stayed on her and they weren't you talking about anything. Fear. She was just like, uh-huh. I, I don't like to be a burden. Like exactly. This. It's like, uh, it's, it, yeah, the combination of don't drop me and secondarily of I, I don't want to be a burden on you. I wish I, I wish you guys didn't have to do this. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, but that was like one of the only times it was brought up, which I thought was great. Because yeah. like, uh, I, I initially when I saw it, I was like, oh, this is gonna be a cool story. Because a, a lot of times that is the, the case where somebody with a disability, and it's cool to see those stories, right? But, where they overcome the odds. Yeah. And- it was nice and refreshing to actually see a different take on it where they don't actually really address it too much. No. Uh, it just her, happened to be her family her treats life. are the same. Yep. It's not really a, a hindrance on them. They've been used to it. Uh, no, and I also loved because this is something I've heard people who whether they have cerebral palsy or they're dealing with some form of a physical if it's, if it's a paralysis of some kind. I remember I forgot who the woman was but she's a woman who I think was with cerebral palsy and she mentioned that one of the things that is never talked about and people don't even think about is the fact that she has sexual desires and mm-hmm. is sexually active. Mm-hmm. She said, because when people look at me, they think immediately, oh, clearly that's not part of your life. Which is one of the things we can talk about in, in, in the film. Um, I don't know how this was marketed or even, I don't know. Accepted? A, 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 in India? Yeah. Be, or the, I don't know how much they cut out with the sensor, the, 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 whatever, what are they called? The sensor boards or uh-huh. whatever? Yeah, the censorship board. Because this had like the nudity of like a, an American film. Very much. This was by far, I noted it while we were watching it. games. Right. I was noting it as we were watching it, uh, of the films that we've seen, this is the one that had allowed itself to push the envelope most with sexual expression yeah. and nudity. A hundred percent. Yeah. And I'm, I, uh, you'll know this about me. My two least favorite things in film are just demonic horror and pornography. Mm-hmm. And there is a definite line that's drawn based on the way the director depicts it and the way the screenwriter in, incorporated it into the story. Mm-hmm that changes for me the purpose of sex in a film. You can tell when something's done voyeuristically or pornographically and it's a demeaning of the beauty of sexual expression. This never had any of that. I I felt this was done. If you want to see the way you should film that kind of a thing, I thought this was- I thought it was actually- Absolutely beautiful. Brilliant to do it in the way they did because like you said, normally with people with disabilities, they don't see them as sexual beings. As sexual beings. Especially that scene where he, literally you had both of them almost fully 
uh, exposed. I was yeah. like, that. I think that was laying in purpose. bed together. One hundred percent. You're seeing a woman who is a sexual woman. Yep. And regardless of if she has a disability, like, you no. wouldn't have a problem with this if she didn't. Exactly. If she didn't have a disability. So I thought it was on it's, purpose to make yeah. certain people uncomfortable. Absolutely. Which I loved. I loved it too. And the very first, the first touches of it that I didn't expect, and it became basically the whole film was in early on when. Her brother's asleep and she has the headphones on and she's hearing the people having sex and moaning. Yeah. And the way they shot it when she goes off into the corner and you can see from behind that she's pleasuring herself while she's listening. Yeah. And hopefully, my hope is that a lot of people would see this and for the first time in their life go, oh wow, these people who have this in their life actually are still sexual beings with sexual desires and yeah. sexual questions and, and even more so than other people because uh, like the the how much it's so she was so cute she was so boy hungry and yes. love hungry yeah you know she to, was to to want to know and experience what is just that what does it mean to be human yeah it was you a know? very good coming of age story because this this girl that I thought was actually incredible to do as well because most people see people with disabilities almost as almost innocent. Non sexual. Right, non sexual. They don't, they don't want different things. They, uh -huh. they kind of just take what they're given. But she was going at, she had a relationship and then she made a mistake and cheated on her or left the guy immediately. Yeah. Or just, she did all this stuff that normal people mess up with in their life. Exactly. Uh, which, one other thing I love is that you're telling a story about somebody who's not really a perfect person. Right. You're not really supposed to look up to. It's just, this is the story of this person. This person's uh, journey. And which I love those types of films. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I do too. Um, you know what it reminded me of? Uh, and I liked it more. I mean, it could remind you of any coming of age story, but the reason I liked this one more for a lot of reasons, and we don't need to wax long on it, was the last real coming of age story we saw in American film that people were talking about in, in, in artistic circles was Call Me By Your Name, where you was have- Lady Bird more recent than that? Yeah, but this one, Lady, Lady Bird for me was- uh, We don't think. Here, here's the differentiation. We have very different opinions. Yeah, we? no, 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 here's the differentiation. <laughs> Lady Bird was a coming of age story, but this, like Call Me By Your Name, was very sexual centric. Mm -hmm. Very much who am I sexually and what does that mean as far as my identity and my sense of love and my sense of work. It gave me a little bit of a, at the beginning when she was um, pleasuring herself of, um, uh, what's that fish movie with Guillermo del Toro that just came out? Uh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so it's The Shape of Water. Yeah, Shape of Water. Oh, where yeah. She, like, yeah, great comparison. Right at the beginning, you're, it kind of caught you off guard. Yes. That she, that, this was almost part of her daily routine. Which I, with Shape of Water, I made that movie if you haven't seen yeah, that film. Beautiful Guillermo film. Guillermo del Toro is one of the most brilliant directors. But anyway, great comparison. Uh, but now let's talk about Kalki. Yeah, let's talk about her work. And, and the other actors. Uh, Kalki is... No surprise to me, at least, a brilliant actress who <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was looking for her to fail right in this, honestly. Uh, not, 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 I didn't expect her to, but I no. kept looking. Exactly. You have to look for that in anybody. I mean, I, I look for that. My favorite actors, like Daniel, anytime I saw a Daniel Day-Lewis film, I had my arms crossed and I was looking for him to fail because he's always perfect. And it's like, you can't be perfect all the time, man. Where, where are the moments where I'm going to see you not be believable? Mm -hmm. And he's never yeah. failed. Uh, so uh, when you're doing something like this, where you're portraying somebody with cerebral palsy, or you're portraying a blind person, there, there's always those opportunities where we're looking from a critical standpoint as actors mm -hmm. as to where you miss the work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I was with you too. Yeah. I was watching for the moments where maybe she missed it. Because when they don't miss it, you're just blown away by the level of focus. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, I had, I have only one critique about the work she did on the physical level, it, oh, yeah. and it's only on the physical level. Which one? And the critique is just basically, it's it's. I mean, frame this because I don't want to be critical of her because I'm not. I'm what I'm about to say. I'm saying as if I was an acting coach, working, and what I was looking for was the slightest, smallest, tiniest little thing we could do to help perfect the work even more. That's about what I'm gonna say, okay? There were a couple of moments for me, only a couple, where I felt she had lost the connection of the muscular work that was memory in her body in terms of what would be happening in someone with cerebral palsy where there's the mapping in the muscles that are always going to be that way. 
always going to be that way. I felt there were a couple of moments where she was so in character and so in the story that the work was missed for a second, right? I saw more fluidity and relaxation than I saw the tightness in the muscle. I'm being hypercritical. 99.9% .9 of this woman's work was brilliant. Yes. Oh, no, I, Absolutely brilliant. And none of what I just mentioned, where I'm looking at the nuances of the physical work, none of it distracted me from the story or her character oh, at all, yeah, or made no, her unbelievable. I agree. I, I thought I saw a few moments uh, yeah, right. to where I would have done some. The same with the blind girl. As yeah, well. 100. And she, but for the most part, she too was was yeah. quite no, good. No, no, nobody was bad. Nobody was bad uh, in any well, way, shape, or form. Well, none of the main people were bad. Uh, um, but uh, I thought Kalki is uh, she's a brilliant, brilliant actress, and she gave such emotion, uh, and and she connected with everybody. She's a great listener. Her, by the way, the work she did on the speech, mm -hmm. flawless. Yeah, that was flawless. And that was nonstop accurate. And the the way she had her tongue, one hundred percent brilliant. That was nonstop mm. perfect. Uh, I did want to know if she was adopted or not, though. Yeah, I had that thought during the dance scene. Yeah. And I thought to myself, because we know her lineage is that she's French and Indian, so uh, her parents were clearly both Indian. Yeah. And uh, I, I just got the, I just got the idea that she wasn't necessarily adopted, but she very well could have been. Yeah. And they left that open to interpretation. Yeah, I didn't. I <laughs> nothing yeah. to do with the story. Nothing uh, to do with the story. Uh, I loved Kalki. I, 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 I want to see tons more of her stuff. I think she's actually one of the best actresses that we've seen, honestly. Very underrated from what oh, I can see. Oh, my stars. In, in Bollywood. She would be, for me, of the actresses we've seen, this is this woman is clearly the most underappreciated actress that yeah. I think is in Bollywood right now because her level of mastery at such a young age of the physicality and the emotional nuances that was directed in a way, we'll get into the directing, the director was unforgiving mm -hmm. in his yeah. intimacy with her. I believe it's a her. I'm sorry. Her. 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 Um, Which, once again, great job, India. Female yeah, directors. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it's just not something we see too much here. And I can, <laughs> I could sincerely, and I, I sincerely could feel that this story was very, very personal to her uh, in the way she directed it, and obviously she wrote it. And did you see the, the notes at the end credits mm -hmm. where she mentioned, I believe it's, it's her son? Oh, yeah, I did see that. And how the wound and the light that's come and how that helped her create this story. She, in the way that she directed the film, uh, in the use of the score and the use of the visuals and everything else, it was a really, uh, it had a woman's touch. That's yeah. all I could say. 100%. It, it had a woman's I think a woman touch. had to direct this, honestly. Yeah, it had a woman's touch and it allowed her to get into the space of the character that was pretty, Kalki had nowhere to go in this. No, and she was straight up on her all, all the time. All the time. She had, she had no... Nowhere to hide. No, and once again, Kalki never had a, a false moment Not in terms one. of uh, emotion. Not ever. one, ever. Uh, I thought she was brilliant. Yep. Uh, I would love to sit down and talk with her, and uh, oh God, it would be a dream to act with her. <laughs> I, oh, yeah, to act with this woman, she gives you so so much. Uh, it was, and the fact that we saw her in Gully Boy and it's such a different character than this. Yeah, but even in Gully Boy we recognized, uh -huh. that's why we were so impressed by her because it, it, again, my favorite moments for her, she was great all the time, but the real intimate moments she had with Renvir when he's admitting that he's in love with Alia's character. Yeah. Um, Kalki exudes she exudes what all good actors need to exude, which is the transparency of self, the sharing of what... And this, let me tell you something. From an acting standpoint, what she had to do, not just the emotional bearing, but she had to bear a lot of herself in a way, physically, that most oh, yeah. people would never want to be seen publicly. Yep. Uh, and I'm not just talking about the nudity, I'm talking about the reasons for the nudity, and to be presenting herself in a way where she's naked, that for Kalki is probably not the way she would want the world to see her naked. Yep. You know, yeah, not her most flattering self. No, and that's that's the bravery that great 100%. actors need to have. I love. Like, <laughs> like, I can't praise her enough. I, yeah, she and I can't one. praise the directing enough either. I also want to praise the mother as well, who I yes. thought put on a brilliant performance. Beautiful, uh, beautiful. Like when she um, that moment with herself in front of the mirror, and she was calling. Yes, her. I thought that was a brilliant moment. Like she just she didn't really she didn't say a word. 
and she was just she broke your heart. Yep. Uh, and it was just such a brilliant moment. And then any really any uh, I thought the relationship between the the two characters was really well done, and they had so Very much believable. chemistry. Yes, yeah, so uh, believable. Yeah. As the the dad too, even though he didn't play a significant role, I really believed this family. Yeah, one hundred percent. They were married, and this was a dad. And even though he objected to the things he objected to, he still loved his daughter. He wasn't this domineering. You know, even even the playfulness when he said, I don't want you to go to New York, and the mom was like, well, we're going to go without you. <laughs> and then the whole cricket match moment where yeah, yeah, he's yeah. like, you ask her. Exactly. <laughs> uh, and then uh, also the, uh, the the love interest as well, the site. So yeah. I she, thought she did really well. Very I thought well. they handled that whole relationship really, really well. Um, I love the play on the word the first time she's trying to tell her oh, mom she's bi. <laughs> Yeah, I love that. Yeah, uh, and then uh, the parts I didn't like um, outside of what we already talked about, uh, it was sometimes very predictable, uh, a little bit, and but then there's of course always some side characters that are usually white, but <laughs> but there's the the record no the pawn shop when the guy was like oh it's nine hundred something and then he was like oh. oh I'll see what I could do fifty percent off it's like. That doesn't happen. Right. Uh, and then also the oh, what a really bad moment, two really bad moments. The waiting. The, the waiter. The waiter. The, what, what was that? Come on. on. Oh, that's a great choice. I'll be right back. In New York, you think? No. <laughs> yeah, that waiter, I was like, seriously? He wasn't even on screen. And, seriously? Oh, God. But, uh, you know, little parts yeah, that like was that. That was awful. You said, but <laughs> I don't know how you felt about the ending. But. Uh, how did you feel about the ending? Because I have a... I, I, I am fine with the emotional wrapping up of the ending. Right. I hate the date part of the ending. <laughs> okay. I hated it. Like right when I was like, okay, she's going on a date, and I, you know, of course, we assumed it was probably the wheelchair guy or something right, like right, that, right. Or, uh, or the or the the girl. Uh, but then she came up, and it was just a mirror in front of me. Like, oh, I was like, I out loud said, "Shut up." <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I would have been fine if like she was just. Just doing your life, just yeah. randomly going on and, you know, going to the store, doing something and end it like that and just, her life goes on. Now see, I, I, I didn't like the fact that she was sitting in front of a mirror I having did. a date with herself because she did. found herself. I, it's I exactly it. it. I hate it. I like. Don't be that on the nose. <laughs> I don't like that. <laughs> I know you don't. We would have gotten that without you doing that. I know. I agree. But it doesn't bother me that but we that's that. the. It didn't ruin the film. Like I said, I love the film. I, I really enjoyed this film. Yeah. I no. just hated that part of it. And I, it didn't bother me because I think the intent of the heart of the director, who also wrote it, was there. And yes, was it a heavy-handed depiction of what we already knew? Yeah. It, it was. But for me, it didn't bother me because it just was the picture of what this really was. Even the way she looked at the end, that, that she took a full arc that resulted in her coming to a place of feeling more confident in who she was and who she is. Yeah. And yeah, but I, without you having I'm you know. being in front of a mirror on a date. I know. I did, like I said, I, it did ruin it for me. It's not like it was How I Met Your Mother ending. Uh, he doesn't know what that means. But <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> it was. I still really enjoyed the film. I'll tell you what. Comparatively, which I, I didn't really like. I'm using this comparison again to Call Me by Your Name, which was a movie that, for the most part, I didn't like the film, mm. but there were moments of it that were brilliant. Uh, like the dad monologue. Yeah. That's the best part of that film. Phenomenal. The other part of the film that I loved that is more your liking is the way it ended with just Chalamet having his emotions. Yeah. That just tight shot for an eternity. Yeah. And all we see is Chalamet coming to grips with what he's experienced and there's no resolution in what he's experienced as of yet. He's still grappling with yeah. what he went through. I... I the romantic in me and the one who believes that there are things in life that you do get a resolution on and you heal from and you grow, I liked the poetic nature you of just, the director wanting to have. You don't need that heavy-handed. Yeah, it's a time to, I hate uh, heavy-handedness. And I really liked the use of the score. I felt that the score complemented the film in ways a lot of scores don't, mm -hmm. in that the music gave a... The music was clearly supposed to be... It wouldn't surprise me if the, if the director had talked with the composer and said, what I want the score to be... I want us to hear the melody of this girl. I want people to connect the music to this girl and feel a connection that when they, in the same way that when you hear the theme to Forrest Gump, all you think about is Forrest. Mm -hmm. I felt that the score was done in such a nice way that it, it, it carried the uh, fragility of who she is. Yeah. 
the, fr the fragility of who she is because it was mostly just that piano thing without yeah. a lot of accompaniment to give you the sense of there's a fragility in her physicality. Mm -hmm. But it was consistent enough to show you that she's not a weak person. Yeah. It just really encaptured, it, it encapsulated for me uh, the, what the, a score for this kind of film should be. I thought it was an exceptional job. Yeah, exceptional I, I agree. Job. Like most of this film, I, I completely loved. I'd give it a, a B plus to an A, honestly. Yeah, I would. Uh, I'd probably give this an A. Like in terms of artisticness, it like it, it's not going to be one of my favorites in terms right. of like no, I could watch this over and over again. But a lot of great films aren't like that. Exactly. No, this one's this one's heavy. Yeah, this one's heavy. Uh, I liked it as much as I liked English of English, but yeah. I'd much rather watch English of English. Oh yeah, English of English is much easier to watch. Much easier to watch. Um, but, but it's, it's they're it's, the same for me in terms of what I consider quality, a quality movie. They're very. I, I would give it a B plus to an A. Yeah, honestly, really, really, really good. Really good. Movie. I would recommend this to anybody unless you just like action because there's none of that. Right. <laughs> yeah. If you don't like like just watching actors and just dr and, dramatic and human beings evolving, yeah, then, then you're you're. You won't why are you watching this channel? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but uh, I would 100% recommend this film. Go see it. Let us and know. One last thought. Huh? I was wanting to see where and why it was called Margarita with a Straw. And I went, you know, she obviously ordered the drink, the Margarita with a Straw. But that for me, I think that's a beautiful title for the film because mm -hmm. it too encapsulates everybody has a margarita. Everybody has a margarita. Everybody has a margarita. But hers is different mm -hmm. because she's different. I'm so glad I'm remembering this. Quite possibly my favorite line in the film. Mm. She has just told her mom after she was doing her mom's hair that she's bisexual. Mm -hmm. And she's sitting at the table and her mom is angry. Because remember, her mom's rea reaction is yuck. Ooh, yeah, actually, that was a great reaction. Her mom's, it was a beautiful, I mean, honest it was reaction. Awful. It was and an I awful, hated it, but it was, it was great. It was great. It was I, honest. I loved it. I was like, because normally you think of something that somebody would react to, and it's like, ah, how dare you? Right. She just said yuck. She just said yuck. I was like, that was brilliant. I agree. Uh, and then that next day, she's at the table, and she's using the little thing she bought to say the words. Yeah. And she basically says this to her. Because her mom says to her, it's not normal. Yeah. And she replies, I've never been normal, so what's the difference about this now? I thought that was absolutely brilliant. And I think that was another, as heavy handed as you felt the mirror thing was, mm -hmm. I love the subtlety of the transition of her mom because what I think happened was that moment resonated with her mom. She doesn't say anything, mm -hmm. but how can you not miss the fact that what her daughter just said is true? Mm -hmm. All my life I've never been normal. Why is this any different? Yeah. And when she's on her deathbed, basically. Which and is another actually part I hate. Oh, go. All she does is ask her, how's Kenna? Mm -hmm. In the asking, yeah. she's letting her know, yeah. I know you love her and she matters to you, so that's why I'm asking. Yeah. I yeah. love that. It's brilliant. Most, like I said, the, 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 all the other rest of part of the film wasn't heavy handed outside of a few. Extras. No, just the But also, that reminded me of some one of the extras that I. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, this is what happened when the, mom, shoot. when the mom shot died. You heard, oh, she's, she's dead now. Bye. Oh, no. You need this room. <laughs> Give it a moment. <laughs> I think they know what that means. Like that. Oh man. Yeah. Like yeah. why would it happen? She's like, no, she's gone. Get what? out of the room. Yeah. yeah, I agree. That was like, wait, okay, hold on, let it breathe a minute. You folks. don't even need to say it. Yeah. Like we, they understand what that means. Exactly. But anyways, yeah, that. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> that just reminded me of that. Thumbs up, great movie. Go see, that go film. see the movie. Well, you probably see it. Kalki, you are a yeah, great. Of course, actress. you're watching this. <laughs> yeah, you're a great actress. We'd love to talk to you about the craft. We'd love yes. to work with you. Come on the channel anytime. You've got the chops to get some awards in your shelf because yep. you're that good. Yep. Let us know what you should watch and review next down in the comment section. Be yeah.